began in the uh, 8th century already with Boniface, this missionary who was coming to the missionary uh, in Thuringia and he founded a bishop. So uh, this was the first mention of the town of Edward II because he uh, wrote a letter to the Pope at Rome. He asked him to uh, permit this foundation and in this letter the town of Erfurt had been mentioned for the first time, but this was not the foundation of the town. So when Boniface came here, he already found a small town. Okay, uh, Boniface went away ten years later, uh, for uh, 752, became Bishop of Mainz, and with this uh, event, this departure of, the, of uh, Boniface, uh, the Archbishop of Mainz became the Bishop of the town, and later he became the Prince. Um, and the Archbishop of Mainz was later um, the one who was supporting the Jews here and uh, the uh, Jews, they had to pay a special fee, a protection fee to the Archbishop of Mainz. So he was the protector of the Jews, of the Jewish community in the town of Erfurt. So when we are speaking about Jewish communities, we have uh, four different Jewish communities. The first uh, was settling here speak, in the 11th century. So the first evidence of the existence of a Jewish community um, uh, is the old synagogue, which we will visit later. So uh, it had been, the first synagogue had been constructed in the end of the 11th century. And uh, so the second evidence of the existence of this uh, of a Jewish community is the uh, Jewish oath of the uh, la latest quarter of the fourth quarter of this 12th century. So this is the first document speaking uh, about a Jewish uh, community. Then we know of the existence of a Jewish community in the 1221 was a pogrom. Crusaders were coming. Uh, to uh, Erfurt and killed 25 Jews. So these were the first evidences of a, the existence of a Jewish community. Um, concerning uh, the cathedral, I can explain you the cathedral too, uh, but so I came here to you, uh, with you to the cathedral because in the cathedral and outside we have some uh, anti-Judaic symbols. In medieval churches you very often have uh, pictures, symbols against the Jews, and I will show you them. But concerning the cathedral itself, you can see on the cathedral hill, we have two different churches. On the left side is St. Mary's Cathedral, on the right side St. Severus Church. Two different churches, and uh, so this they were constructed in a rivalry. No rivalry, rivalry between, uh, Christ, uh, between Catholics and Lutherans because both churches are Catholic churches and they had been constructed in the Middle Ages. Only. This began in the 8th century with two small chapels. Boniface did not construct a small chapel right there where you can see today uh, the cathedral. On the right side already has settled some Benedictine nuns and they too did not construct a small chapel. In the beginning no problem. But later those chapels became churches and those churches had been enlarged and this was in rivalry. Every church wanted to be larger than the other and every church didn't want the place to be other. And finally we did reach the situation you can see 500 years ago. Later there was no more construction place but there was no more place left there. Okay. Um, but they could have demolished it and built a higher one. <laughs> uh, so uh, the monastery had the higher church. Uh, the cathedral is longer. So <laughs> it's a compromise. <laughs> so nobody has won this rivalry, <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, concerning the construction of the cathedral, it's only partly constructed on the hill itself. You can see it when you're looking at the church towers, the Belgians. They're standing in the middle of a church. The reason is that there where the church tower is standing, the church itself was ending. First church, uh, Roman's Basilica, was constructed there where you can see the green roof. And this had been demolished later and uh, uh, there was constructed the uh, late medieval nave we can see today. 
And then in the 14th century, the choir was constructed. You can see on the left side. So, um, and, but the problem was, there where the belfries are standing, the hill itself is there. So they had to extend the hill. They constructed a substructure, you can see on the left side. On, on the substructure they constructed the choir. So that only one half of the cathedral is standing on the hill itself, the other half is standing on the substructure. But let's go on the hill now. The government of the uh, Catholic Prince, Joachim yeah, Schaub, Mainz too. So. Uh, finally, as there had been uh, consultations, and finally say, they signed a treatise in 1530, in which um, was declared that both denominations, Catholics and Lutherans, we are officially allowed in the town. So this and is this the first Confirmed town. in 1555, without votes. It's, uh, it's uh, before 1555. So yeah. it's the first town in Germany where Lutherans and Catholics were uh, living together and it was confirmed in Augsburg, yeah. of course, yes, yeah. yes. But this was a separate... But, but uh, already 1530? Yes, already 1530. That's interesting, yeah. Okay, but let's go there. Uh, artworks, uh, because then I would stop in one hour only. Uh, but uh, I will concentrate on the Jewish ceremonies. You can see here a, a dawn entry. And so um, you can see on both sides the foolish and the wise virgins. So it's, uh, it's a story told in New Testament in uh, Matthew, and the virgins had to come in the evening uh, with oil to Jesus. And so the, you can see on the left side, which is the right, here. on the left side for you, you can see the wise virgins which has, have still their oil. And uh, on the right side, you can see the foolish virgins which have lost their oil. But here you can see 12 women, because they have, uh, we have two other women. Uh, with the wise virgins, you can see on the point, you can see uh, the ecclesia, the Christian church. And on the right side, with the uh, foolish virgin, you can see synagogue, the Jews. <laughs> so, so why the Jews? So uh, you can see at the down there the goose on the side, on the left side, and she's really ugly, so when you see it, her face. This is, so the symbol for the synagogue, for the Jews. That's to say, uh, the Jews are not, they are among the foolish virgins, and uh, they are not uh, really, they cannot come to the last judgment. Okay. What's the symbol you can see? The goose? It's a goat. Goat. That's why we couldn't see the boots. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, let's go inside. They own, have their own guides, but there you can see uh, the choir stars, a picture of a Jew sitting on a pig, riding a pig, and she's fighting with a uh, knight, which is sitting on a on a horse, and uh, so the pig ride, another symbol, uh, an another anti judaic symbol, uh, and so it explains, it shows us uh, the conflict between Jews and Christians. Uh, prosecutions began uh, with pogroms at the beginning of the 14th century, and I will say later talk about the large pogrom in 1349. So, everybody here? Everybody last? Two more. One. Sorry to, be, sorry to be slow learning. Okay. It goes back to be Catholic. This, those two churches mm -hmm. are today Catholic. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the Middle Ages we were making no difference between Catholics no, and Muslims. No, Muslims, but, but, but in, it's, from it's the Catholic. 1520s. From the 16th century, 16th, uh, from 1530 on yeah. precisely, it's Catholic. But was there a period before 1530 when the Reformation happened? In it? Yes, uh, the Lutherans uh, occupied it in uh, 1521. So then from 1525 on, they used it together. Okay, that, that's explained it. Thank you. So, okay. Thank so you. let's continue.
here we have a commemoration needle. Uh, it's one of uh, the needles standing in front of houses where Jews were living in the Nazi period. So uh, this is uh, symbolizing so the victims of uh, the Nazis, uh, which uh, had been killed in the, uh, concentration camps, uh, extermination camps. And uh, so this is, we have no cobblestones, perhaps you already had seen cobblestones uh, uh, where Stolpersteine, where the name is it's in gold, the name of uh, the man or the woman is uh, with the, the days of living uh, is uh, written down there. We have uh, such needles, uh, it's uh, the result of a artist competition and so uh, the commission fine, uh, they, uh, uh, finally decided to take such needles because it's better to see here. Yeah. Um, and you can see written here Günther Bär, born in 1938. So he was born here in this house in 1948. He had been deported on the 9th May 1942 uh, and uh, he was dying in the, no, he was deported in, to the ghetto of Belize. Three years uh, old. So three, uh, four years old. He was four years old, uh, and he died. Uh, and so in this, uh, where we are commemorizing the victims of the Nazis in the town. And so uh, we have not in front of every house uh, such a needle today, uh, but we are developing this. So we began with four different needles, and they, you have to pay it. So, <laughs> and so uh, we are asking uh, for support, and then uh, you can give money uh, so that in order to uh, uh, put a needle in front of a house where Jews had been living. Okay, and so let's continue. Speak now about the history of the Jews in uh, the Nazi period. Um, so, um, at the beginning of uh, this period, so 1931, in Holtringia, we were living 2,442 Jews. In the town of Erfurt, uh, we had 831 Jews. In uh, 1939, still. No, 1,947 Jews we are living in Thuringia. So, um, okay, uh, when the Nazi period began, so they were coming into power in uh, January 1933, uh, began already the persecutions of uh, the Jews. So they organized the first boycott in April 1933. But this first boycott uh, were, was no great success because uh, they wanted to force uh, the people not to go to Jewish jobs, but uh, in any case, uh, the, uh, the customers still uh, continued to go there. But uh, during the years with the Jewish with the propaganda against the Jews uh, and uh, uh, with uh, the uh, continuing uh, Nazis continuing to force uh, the people not to go in Jewish shops. Uh, the uh, Jews were forced to uh, uh, sell their shops, finally, and uh, to leave uh, Germany. Those, this was the uh, first uh, uh, policy of uh, persecutions till 1939. And in 1937, uh, finally began a politic called Arisierung. So to force the Jews to uh, sell their shops, uh, their property at a low price and to sell it to uh, Aria, to uh, those Germans which had no uh, uh, Jewish uh, members, uh, fam family members. And uh, so we have two examples uh, of uh, Arisierung here in the inner town. I'm not going there with you because in front of those houses are actually construction works, so it's too noisy. But I can show you them. This house is here uh, in this uh, small book, and uh, the first building is a pharmacy, the Moren Apotheke. You can see it here. Okay, we took the picture on the left side. 
And uh, the uh, owner of this uh, pharmacy was David Littman. Now you could see him in, on the other side with his women and his children. And David Littman uh, was uh, born a German Jew, uh, was born in uh, uh, New York because his family immigrated. Uh, but they came back uh, at the beginning of the 20th century uh, to Germany because they didn't feel, feel well in uh, New York. And so they settled in Posen. It uh, had been a part of Eastern Germany to, to, today in Bologna. And so uh, David Littman studied pharmacy and he opened his first shop nearby Berlin. And then in 1928 he came to Erfurt and he bought uh, this pharmacy. And he transformed this pharmacy. It became the most modern pharmacy in whole Erfurt. Um, but uh, with the beginning of this uh, uh, Nazi policy I was talking about, uh, when uh, they, uh, they, they forced uh, the people not to come to this Jewish pharmacy, this, uh, they said, so uh, he had heavy losses. And finally he sold his uh, pharmacy to an... Going. Finally, in 1935, he sold his pharma the pharmacy at a really low price. He could emigrate to the States, 